The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 17th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question. But you can't call it. You can always send me an email. For that, you send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magnificent, marvelous Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend out there. Currently, we've got a bit of a mixed bag. You've got the Dow up 11 points, Russell's up 11 points, the Tranny's up 11 points. Hey, that sounds like we should be in Vegas. But to the downside, the S&P's off three, the NASDAQ 100's down 40, the semis are off 25. Gold is down 15 bucks, silver's off 41 cents, lights we crude down 77 pennies, natural gas is up 18 cents, 30 of treasury, down one point, trade out at 129.23. Lead the charge dollar wise the upside you've got prometheus bioscience is up 69 percent you gotta love that that's a 79 dollar move end phase energy up 18 bucks nearly nine percent solar edge up 16 and change that's a five percent move first solar five percent about eleven dollar move morphic holdings up seven bucks twenty percent we got some movers and we've got some shakers to the downside it's asimil holdings off 30 bucks nearly five percent micro strategy five percent and 17 bucks lamb research 14 bucks three percent moderna's down 12 but nearly an eight percent move in state street corp down to about 13 percent that is a ten dollar move to the downside let's begin by taking a look at those equity futures here let's start with this page since we're right here you've got the uh Yes, mini. It still has its sell the D point pattern that only gets negated with a close above 4177. Price is trading um, just slightly. Well, it's below the top of its daily profile, which is 4171. You know, so maybe it says that price is going to pull back to that center line. We can see that center of that profile, 4114, has really acted as a key level of support. The NQ, um, it needs a bearish reversal candle, which would be pretty easy to do today because that was a doji candle on Friday. So you could get a confirmed Rhodesman indicator top today, could. Uh, price is still above the top of its profile, so conditions are somewhat neutralized at the moment. In the case of the Dow Equity Future Contract, no top in place. It needs a bearish reversal candle. Um, short of that, well, price is still struggling. So it did close for one session into its uh, swing point. That was a swing point taking us back to February 14th. It's still below that, but another close in the 34,120 level likely sends us north. In the case of the Russell 2000, just a consolidation going out with inside its profile. Price up at the top of that consolidation. That's up at the 19. 1955. I'm sorry, 1955. It's up at the 1810. It's up to the 1811 area out there. So that's what's going on in the daily time frame charts for the equity future contract. But let's take that. Let's switch panels here. Let's go over to the white background charts. And this is really going to, we're going to continue looking at the equity futures, but we're going to go ahead and try to answer a question from uh, 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 Roger in Brazil. So let's switch over to the intraday charts out here. So Roger's question, first, let me read it. And then you'll know why we're going to do what we're going to do. So it says, uh, good morning, Steve. How are you? I'm a new viewer all the way from sunny Brazil. Love the positive approach. You're, bringing to, you're welcome. You're welcome. Question. For us new viewers out there, could you please explain briefly how you interpret the market profile boxes? 
and a green red line on my charts. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Oh wait, that I'm sorry. That was that was the weekend message. This one says. Thanks for your answer. Yeah, yeah, you definitely walked to workshops. Okay. Uh, I got to turn this sideways just to try to read this. So it says, okay. So specifically about market profile, I've got two questions, especially for intraday charts. Many new profile boxes are formed as price moves during the uh, day. Yes, true, true. Uh, are all profile boxes equally important? The answer to that question is yes. Uh, it's dependent upon the time frame that you're trading. So a profile is important. So out here, so we've got eight different charts up here. And each of these eight different charts likely have different profile areas. For example, the 10-minute chart, price is trading below the bottom, which is 41.64. You're at 41. On a 15-minute chart, you were down at 41.67. On a 30-minute chart, you're at 41.69. Um, so, but all of the profile levels, they tell you for that specific time frame where buyers and sellers reside. If the buyers, which is the bottom of the profile, or it can be a range because if the center line is closer in proximity to the bottom than the top, for example, the 60-minute ES mini chart here, then your real support area is between 41.43 and 41.53. Why? Because the center line is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside the profile that is currently formed between 41.43 and 41.78. So we know buyers are at the bottom, sellers are at the top. Both buyers and sellers are at the center. Well, if there's buyers that are also at the center, and that's closer in proximity to the bottom of that profile, that's why I call it a bullish structured profile, that is the range where you would have buyers at. Um, so, yes, all profiles are equally as important. Stay within your your time frame, though, that you're trading um, or use them however you or use them however however you'd like out there. Or do we look primarily at the last profile box? Uh, uh the last profile box that formed. No, once once a profile fails, you can skip any of the prior boxes out there. It's kind of interesting to look at prior boxes when you're looking for patterns. So, for example, let's just open up the daily time frame. And when I say you're looking for patterns, what you're trying to find is, especially when you get into those buy the dip areas out here. Well, I've got the June contract. It's kind of hard to, to to show, but you're always watching is is price pulling back to the bottom of profile and then moving off of that again support levels kind of like what you had out here as just an example back in uh, November 17 2022 or is price breaking through those profile levels as it did on December 16th has support broken has resistance failed those are some of the things that you those are the basic things that you're really looking for. Um, which profile time frames do you consider the most relevant for intraday trading for swing trades. Uh, again, it's what's time, what, what time frame is it that you're paying attention to? What I would be doing, so to answer the swing type trade or the intraday trade, what I do is I look for um, synergy to the extent that you can find it. And what I mean by that is I like to see at least three of the four equity future contracts for their time frames generating the same message for you and I. So as an example, and just looking at this ES mini chart here, what we don't see is any kind of a bottom signal, let's say on the 30 minute time frame, nor do I see one on the 15 and the 10 minutes got a roads momentum indicator. What I do see on the 30 minute charts though, is that there's a possibility uh, because we're in bar number eight right now, that we could get a TD nine count pattern that forms between 11.30 and 12.30. So we come back to this break, we're gonna pull up all the 60 minute charts, see if we have any synergy there. I don't know if we do or don't, but we're gonna find out. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 So we're taking a look at a question from Roger in Brazil. We're taking a look at the 60-minute uh, equity future charts out there. It's not showing what I was hoping that it would show. Uh, Synergy, which is at least three of the four charts uh, showing us potential bottom signals. But let's take a look at what we can determine or, or learn at least from the 60-minute uh, time frame charts. If we look at the very, the very bottom right, the Russell 2000, 60-minute time frame. What we see up here is a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. That forms at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's on April the 14th. That top then leads to a pullback all the way back to breakout support, 1782.40, TD9 breakout support. That level was tested four different times, held. There was also a TD9 count bottom that had formed back at the uh, 10 o'clock time frame in the evening on April the 12th out there. That was also tested and held. And now what price is doing, it's running right up into potential resistance. That's up at the 1808. Uh, 80 level, that's a TD9 count breakdown resistance area out there. Could also be that what we have setting up here inside the Russell 2000, quite frankly, is an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern. So if price, uh, and, and that right now, price did take out the B point. And so the A to B equals CD, let me just go ahead and copy and paste. Let's see, control B, there we go. And just give you a, a, a potential price projection level. That price projection level would get us up to about 1870. So really back up into the highs that we took a look at from 9 o'clock on April the 14th. And that's what it's communicating to us as long as it can plow through that breakdown area at 1808.80. So that's showed us a nice bottoming signal. We had Rhodesman Dominicator tops for each of the 60-minute time frames, but it was only the the Russell that really pulled back to a logical area of support and then moved off of that. Now, on a hourly basis for the ES mini you can see that we are now in bar number eight now we have to see a spike below the low of uh, the day so far that low of the day so far 41.5650 you have to see a spike below that between now and 12:30. and if you do that then we're likely to get likely to get i need to still see the bars form for each uh, hourly session oh wait this is a 60 minute chart what am i talking about eight would be noon one, two, not till 2 p.m. So between noon and 2 p.m. is when we'd be looking for a 60 minute bottom pattern, TD9 count bottom pattern to potentially form where it would be also be pulling back into bullish profile support. 
So here we have a 60 minute profile. We know that where buyers are lined up is 4143 and sellers are at 4178. And that we know at the 4153 level, both buyers and sellers, bullish structured profile, that's your bullish structured area and zone, 4143 to 4153. On days where you can't get any kind of synergy with regard to signals on your intraday charts, and I say just stay out of the water. But find some time frame. 15 minute, 30 minutes, 60 minute, whatever time frames you use, look for the synergy there. And then you're looking, that's going to give you a little bit more reliable. Doesn't guarantee anything, just gives you more reliable or higher probability um, of the uh, trades uh, working out of the message that the market is communicating to you. You know, it's the entire market, so to speak. So, Roger, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, request and enjoy those uh, workshops out there. Next question really coming in from uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent wants to take a look at natural gas. Let me see what the question is. It says, good morning, Steve. We'd appreciate your analysis of uh, latest uh, iteration of a potential bottom of natural gas. Anything different in this version? A hold above 219 is at least a start, I suppose. Thanks for your help. Happy, happy marvelous uh, Monday. You do the same, uh, Brett. So let's go take a look at the natural gas charts. Let's, let's go ahead and try to break this down in detail. And uh, by doing that, let's start right here. So we're going to have our eight-panel set of charts for natural gas. The left-hand panel... So just to review, the left-hand panel is the one that is concerning. It's concerning because of the following. Number one, price broke through, uh, closed below a hammer candle. It did that uh, last month out there. And so there's no other bottom signal that Stevie sees on a monthly basis out here with regard to natural gas. We are in bar number six. It says you could potentially not get a bottom signal on the monthly time frame chart for natural gas. So this we're in uh, April and not until June. So it could be the, so this is six, seven, four, um, May. Yeah, so June, July is on a monthly basis when you could get that pattern. It doesn't mean that it can't bottom. It's just the monthly chart is the concern. The weekly chart. So on a weekly chart, let me see this. I'm getting different signals from different platforms. That high, 242. This high, 242. So 2420, 2421. So it didn't. We did not get a confirmed roads meant to mitigate. Let me just make sure we load all historical data. Just give me one second here, Brent, because I've had a couple of different. Yeah, so we did not get a confirmed key reversal bar inside of uh, natural gas for the weekly time frame. So it looks to me like what natural gas is going to do. So if we open up the weekly chart here, we've got looking at the June contract now. Uh, Brent, since we're rolling over into it. Here in the case of natural gas, what it needs to do on a weekly basis is clearly close above its oscillator and change line. It has not closed above an oscillator and change line since uh, September 2nd of 2022. So quite a while out there. So I would say a close above that would be another uh, thing for you and I to be observing and looking for. It doesn't mean once it does that, it doesn't have battles because it does because those profile levels are up above at 273, 299, and 325 out there. Uh, for uh, for natural gas for the uh, June contract that we're looking at here on the June contract as well we can see that we got that nice roads meant to indicator bottom so it wasn't a sell the D it was a roads or buy the D it was a roads meant to indicator bottom pattern out there and where price is struggling now is at that 243 level the actual 2.435 so I would say on the June contract Brent if price is able to close above that you know that would be uh, that would be at least be signaling to us we should see that move to the top of the or to the weekly oscillator change line as well as the top of its daily profile. So the top of the daily profile in June is 258, and the weekly oscillator change line is 256. As price moves higher, that number will move higher as well. So that 258 looks to be the real big battleground. That's assuming that price can close above the center of its uh, weekly profile. Now on a daily on, on an intraday basis out here. What I don't see is any kind of a top. What I do see is more likely A to B equals CD patterns. So let's just use the let's use the four-hour chart here to draw that pattern in. So on a four-hour basis, we have the B point being taken out. Uh, so the A to B will draw that in. Here's your A to B, and then you get a little bit of a sideways move. Let's go ahead and uh, copy and paste this just to give us some type of price target up here. A one to one price target. Now this retracement here, I don't know if that was a 0.382. It was certainly a narrow retracement. The one to one gets us up into the 256 level. So now we've got really all patterns that are suggesting we should see that 256 area get at least tagged. If price can take that out, 258, 
259, let's call it. If price can take that out or close above that, Brent, then the, maybe the monthly chart just is not significant and uh, and that we do have a uh, some type of a bottom or at least a short term short term bottom so it's the monthly that gives us the pause it's the yearly which is in uh, bar number nine on a td9 count that says we want to be able to find an entry into natural gas from a long term hopefully a longer term perspective so brent i hope that helps you out um, and uh, thanks much for taking the time to write in. G-Man wants to take a look at the 30-year Treasury. Basically, wants to look at the TLT. I'm going to put the 30-year Treasury up on our screen right now. And here's what we know. We'll come back to TLT. The 30-year Treasury right now, G-Man, is testing support. And that is the bottom of its daily profile. And if we do see a close below that, and that, by the way, is 129.22. If we see a close below 129.22, that's going to suggest the 30-year Treasury is headed to 124.16. So that gives us a frame of reference. Now at least go take a look at the TLT charts, maybe kind of focus in on its weekly or its daily time frame. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we know about that 30-year uh, treasury. We're taking a look at the TLT charts right now. So they have pulled back to support. And I would not be surprised, G-Man, to see that support level hold. Uh, that's at 129, whoops, uh, that's at uh, 129.22 or 129.24 on the 30-year right now. That's a bullish structured profile that we're looking at for its daily time frame, which is the reason why I said, hey, um, you know, this is likely to hold. If we take a look at the TLT on a daily basis and we're using its profile, whole different message right now. Price is below the bottom of that profile, 104.13. And we might assume or assess here that uh, we've got a, a breakdown. And that breakdown would then suggest that the TLT 
TLT could or should pull back towards the 100.84 level. That is a TD9 count breakout area. You've got 102.35 on the weekly time frame. So that would be another area to watch. That's the bottom of its weekly profile and its oscillator and change line out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the TLT, G-Man. If there's anything else that you needed, please let me know. I'll be happy to uh, get that information for you. Mr. Bill writes in. Mr. Bill would like to take a look at URI. URI is uranium uh, ETF out here. And as we take a look at URI, it is trading out at, hopefully my system is updated, 383.03. It's not. 382.60 is where I see that last trade having fired off. Doesn't really matter at this stage of the game. I'm sorry, not uranium, United Rentals. Stevie, wake up. United Rentals. We take a look at United Rentals. It is trading above a, a swing point. This is the swing point that we have out here from April 12th. Now, I don't know if we'll close the day above it out here, Mr. Bill, but a close above 380.19 with more than 367, no, with more than 825,000 shares. So call it 826,000 shares would give you a confirmed A to B equals C. Now, you're about you're 163,000 right now. So we'll say you're close to 200. Um, with uh, a third of the day, basically. Uh, so you've got 600. So it seems like you're going to pass that B point on lighter volume. That does not mean that you won't get that full A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. So it's got a nice road to indicator bottom, United Rentals. Let's take a look at what that A to B equals CD pattern could look like out here with the 1 to 1 price projection getting you up towards about the uh, 1 402 ish level. But I would expect or anticipate if this does turn into an A to B equals CD to the upside, you would get more than that out of it, more than a 1 to 1. Another price target is going to be 411.54. 411.54 is the oscillator and change line, bottom of its weekly profile. That becomes resistance. We can see this formed a TD9 count, Rhodesman to indicator top on the weekly basis. The price did do its job. It pulled back to that breakout level, and that was at 352.19. On a monthly time frame chart, it's got its work cut out for it. Just needs to get back above that green oscillator and change line to get back in its merry way. So everything here in United Rentals looks good. If I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, you could get a, a top here that forms within the next uh, hour or so. It would be a TD9 SSBAR8, so it would be um, by 1 o'clock. But it requires a spike above... Uh, 384.36 uh, between now and then in order for that to possibly come into fruition. That could just give you a very short-term uh, top and a, a pullback. But otherwise, United Rentals looks pretty good, Mr. Bill. If there's any additional information that you need, please, uh, please let me know. I'll be happy to get to it. Uh, Dan wants to take a look at BBAI. His question is, where would a sell be? Where is it that we would sell this or potentially where is there a pattern completion, I think, is really what we want to take a look at. And so on this A to B equals CD pattern, there's really two that I see that we could uh, use out here. We could either use it as a swing point the uh, day of April the 3rd or we could use it as a swing point. We had a higher high, the uh, swing point from uh, April the 11th. I'm going to uh, – so let me let me just do this off screen real quickly here, BBAI. I just want to see the different retracement level on that uh, longer one that I just took a look at because I'd like – if that's with 0.382, Dan, that's probably the one that I would go with. And I'm just measuring on the other system, 0.35, 36 percent. So – it's certainly close. Let's go with the uh, let's go with the more conservative A to B. Well, if we do so, the more conservative one, Dan, you already know what this looks like. We'll just draw the A to B point out there. We'll do that for everybody in our viewing audience. We're going to go ahead and copy that. Then we're going to just simply paste that in, move that to the C point. And so you're at the one to one level as we speak right now. But you're trading above the top of a profile that formed last week. Uh, I think that might have been on uh, Thursday that it formed. It was at 320. That's a bullish message. You're above its green oscillator and change line. That's a bullish message. So I would just continue to stay with this trade out here. You're trading into a resistance area. And that is certainly the uh, center of its uh, weekly profile. Dan, that number's at 368. So stalling here, okay. But what I sell, what I sell, what I sell would I sell? No, I don't see so. At this stage here, you're above resistance. You're clearing resistance. You're in a strong momentum move to the upside. So what you could do is wait for a bearish reversal candle form. That would then or could then generate a Gartley sell pattern, and that might be your sell signal, or at least what you would do for your reward risk so to speak, or anticipation of a, a pullback would be to uh, look at where the oscillator and change line at top of its profile would be at that time, because those would become the potential price targets out there. The monthly is not providing us with a ton of information. If I look at a short-term time frame chart here, this is the 30-minute 
this looks very bullish. Price is above the top of its profile. It's green oscillator and change line. There's no topping pattern out here. So what I can't find, Dan, are reasons for you to sell. Um, certainly not. And you're at the one-to-one -one level, as I said, on that A to B equals CD pattern, at least the conservative uh, version. I just stick with this or at least put a trailing stop. Um in here and, and stay with this trade. So I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for and that it made sense in taking a look at those charts. So thanks again for the request. We've got a request in here from uh, ELO, Electric Light Orchestra, to take a look at JP Morgan. And the question here is, where is there an entry point? I believe that was an entry point on JP Morgan. Well, that day sailed a long time ago. That entry point really came in on the trading session here of uh, March the 27th. When that generated a nice bullish hammer candle that confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The very next day, it gaps up, and it's been off to the race. Now, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. We can clearly see it's more than the one-to-one -one level. If you do get a sell the D point to bearish reversal candle, you know, then you can take a look at buying some retracement. We don't have that right now. The charts here for the XLF are bullish. Uh, they've got confirmed A to B equals CD patterns to the upside. The XLF chart does. So this suggests that JP Morgan should go target the 144.04 level. That's the top of its daily, or that's the daily TD9 count breakdown area. The weekly chart shows us that we are now trading into the bearish structured profile zone. So you got a lot of resistance up here between 140.02 and 143.26. That means it's at a top? No, it just means it's at resistance. And the rest of the move up here could be a bit of a struggle. On a monthly basis, you're above profile, you're above a green oscillator and change line. Quite frankly, that says this could be set up in A to B equals C to the upside. Uh, with 169.81 being a uh, price target, that's its monthly TD nine count breakdown area. So with regard to an entry price, if you want to play some kind of momentum move out there, you're going to have to wait for at least a short term time frame chart, such as a 30 minute chart to finish some type of pattern to the downside. Now you do have a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but no bearish reversal candle and price finding support at the bottom of its profile. So nothing there to help us out with regard to any potential of when you might see that uh, signal intraday. But that's what you would do is uh, take a look at that uh, ELO. Uh, but right now, um, and it looks like the uh, both the financial sector and J.P. Morgan want to continue to move higher. We had a request from uh, Siegel inside the Tiger's Den. Siegel wanted to take a look at Bud, Bud Light out there. And I believe the question is looking for an entry to sell. Is that correct? I believe, Siegel, that was it. Um, I thought I wrote it down. I didn't. Uh, yellow. Uh, uh, oh, gold. Oh, you wanted gold. Rich wanted Bud. All right, so um, let's do this. Let's do a bud first, then we'll go to, back and take a look at gold. And you're taking a look at where is it that you sell bud light? Where do you sell bud light? We're going to try to answer that when we get back from this break. See, Roach. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're looking at the uh, charts for Anheuser-Busch. Uh, Bud, B-U-D is a ticker symbol. The uh, question is from uh, Rich, who wants to look for, for an area to short uh, Budweiser. So uh, the question specifically, uh, you would think with all the bad press, Bud would be a good short. But other than initial hit, it just keeps hanging in there. Enjoy your program. Thanks for your analysis. Rich from Orlando. So, Rich, uh, you, you, you know, so you're, you're right about that. So, Bud, what it did a few days ago, when I say a few days ago, I'm referring to April 12th, it did pass the B point with volume. So it has a one to one A to B equals CD that would give you a price projection of 63 bucks. But right now we do have a bit of a rally going on. So first, with regard to your point um, that uh, it just took an initial hit and seems to keep hanging in from from here. Well, if you look at the monthly time frame chart, really you'd have to say not much of a hit at all. Price is above the top of its uh, monthly profile, which is a 59.66. That was a bearish profile. It was above. It's been above it for five months now. This suggests that price wants to move higher. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, um, there's no topping pattern. In fact, there's a large A to B equals CD to the upside that has not completed. And the uh, B point out here, so the B point was taken out with 7.7 .7 million shares. And the B point, at least on this one, would have uh, 8.5. Well, 8 so 8.5, well, it was taken out with lighter volume. But I could use this as the B point as well. And so that B point had volume of 8.7 also. So uh, that's interesting. So you, you have a weekly A to B equals CD. The upside has just not been confirmed with volume. But price above profile levels, Rich, as well as above its green oscillator and change line, those are bullish signals. So your question is, where is it that would be the logical short? For me, the answer to that question, one, I'd want to watch volume as it moves into this candle session here from April 11th. Now, the candle session on April 11th did volume of 6.4 million shares. You're at 1.3 as we speak right now. The low of that candle session, quite frankly, is 64.97. The high today, 64.95. So there's a gap there. So that's one possible place for you to take that short. It's right there at the gap. Maybe it's just bouncing up to uh, close that gap and then move lower out there. Or if it closes inside that, even if it's with lighter volume, then the better place to short would be at six, between 65.36, the bottom of its profile, and whatever that green oscillator and change line reading is. Presently, it's at 65.50 out there. So I think that would be the – now, with regard to taking a short right now, if you had some type of signal on a 30-minute time frame chart, you know, some type of top, then you could go ahead and execute that. We don't. We don't have any kind of a signal on a 30-minute time frame chart that suggests that what uh, Bud Light or Bud Bud Light Bud is doing is topping as we speak right now. So that would keep you and I away from that. With regard to Bud itself, uh, seasonally speaking, not sure where we're at. First, let's go see if we can find Anheuser Busch data, 
and how much data we do have. Yeah, we've got it. So now we're looking at the seasonal pattern. This has 16 years worth of data. The red vertical line represents where we're at. Now this sort of support, not sort of, this supports what Rich is looking at. Now Rich, this typically doesn't top out until about next week, April 23rd, which today is the 17th, so a week from today or Friday. So you're into that time period to be looking for it. You know, and that typically just simply moves lower into about May 7th. So not for a long period of time out there. Um, but you are in what would appear to be, you know, an unfavorable cycle out here, which is the month of April, just slightly, so to speak. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Bud. Uh, you are absolutely right. You know, it's holding in there. And it's because of those weekly and monthly time frame charts that, quite frankly, are bullish. So I hope that helps you out, Rich. And uh, thanks so much for listening to the show. And uh, best of luck to you. Now we're going to take a look at gold. And that's for a seagull inside the tiger's den. He wanted to take a look at the shiny metal. And he's looking for an entry price out here. So I'll pull up the charts for gold, and then we want to, so Siegel, yeah, last week, and I'll pull up those charts, we'll switch back over. You know, I had mentioned that what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for gold to form a top. So I'm looking for gold to form a top, move lower, form some type of bottom pattern. Now that bottom pattern may not unfold for a, a couple of months may not unfold for a couple months and i'll come back and show you the reason why we're going to take a look at, at all of that stuff now look on a uh, we take a look at the uh, uh monthly time frame you're above you're trading into the swing point that was a swing point for march of 2022 that says you could get up and at least test that high that high being 2009.90 uh, if we take a look at the june contract here you've got a nice a to b equals cd the upside that gets in about the 2137 level the daily time frame chart is what suggests you could have a top right now and that top is signaled because of the Rhodesman indicator pattern that confirmed on Friday. We had a nice bear sash candle. Now, what's needed? So this kind of takes us back to our earlier question about uh, profile uh, levels out there and what to do, how to use them. And as we take a look at these profile levels, we do see that gold is pulling back into a bullish structure profile area. I would say if this is the top that Stevie's anticipating, then we would see it close below 1974.20. And that first move would take us back to 1847. I'm not saying, I'm not giving a price point of where I believe gold will end up bottoming if we do get a top here. Um, instead, I would be looking for the patterns that might be unfolding, both daily, weekly, you know, intraday out there. So also when I tell you, you're looking at a good place to enter, and I'm just simply just sharing with you, I'm coming from the standpoint of anticipating a top out here. And so, and, but now you're asking, you might ask the next question, you know, would you go short gold? If you're an intraday trader and you trade the gold contract and you have, uh, you use stops, you use, uh, uh, you know, you both sides of the trade out there, then then sure. But if you don't, you know, gold is a tough thing to, uh, to, to be short right now, just simply because of all the geopolitical tension uh, that is uh, that is out there. So with regard to Goldilocks, you're looking for an entry. Now, I could be wrong on this. So if you're looking for an entry point, you're looking for some type of bottoming signal on an intraday basis. Well, the 30 minute time frame chart is one that provides that to you. Uh, and if we take a look at it, ELO, you got a road momentum indicator bottom that formed right at 1130s. Now, 1148, you have a new profile that's formed. So it's bearish in structure. What we do know is the sellers are hanging out on a 30 minute basis between 2005 and 2009. And that's the sell zone. If price can close above 2009, you're off to 2027 out there. So that's an intraday type uh, chart out here. And now you know where both buyers and sellers are lined up. As I look for any other bottoming signals, you got a TD9 count pattern, TD9 count bottom. Uh, that uh, appears to be forming. Now, this will not complete until tonight. Bar number eight will complete at 2 p.m. To get bar number nine, you have to just simply get a close below 2023.90. So yeah, on the uh, uh, five-hour time frame, you could be getting a TD nine count bottom. Now the cool thing about all of this here, Seagull, is if is if my instinct here is is uh, is correct or is accurate, uh, then we will see. The nice thing about these bottom patterns is they will fail, and that's really the next signal that you and I would be looking for to suggest that okay, that road's momentum indicator top on the daily time frame is a time to uh, is a time for gold. To begin moving lower. Now, I mentioned a pullback of about two months out here. Why did Stevie mention that? Well, if we go take a look at the monthly time frame for gold, what we're going to see out here is right now we are in potential of bar number. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the right chart. God dang it, Stevie. Oh, oh hold on. I just grabbed the wrong one. That's all. What was that doing there? That's weird. Okay. Uh, Stevie's weird. Now, if we take a look at this chart out here, here's what we're going to see with regard to Goldilocks. We are going to see that. Um, why isn't this updated? Where'd that go? 
I must not have the right tool on here. So we're going to see that we've just had seven consecutive months of higher closes inside of Goldilocks. Seven consecutive months. I got to pull this continuous contract back a long way to uh, beat that. We did get uh, seven, eight. You got nine consecutive months back at the high back in August of 2020 out there. The normal thing is when you get that kind of a top, you do a two bar knee jerk reaction low. So what we could be looking at is a bottom inside of gold in June. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Now, if gold is going to move to the downside lower, one of the other things that you should really keep an eye on is that U.S. dollar index, which formed that nice buy the D point pattern on uh, Monday. I'm, I'm sorry, on Friday of last week, you have a new profile. So price is running right up towards resistance. Uh, 102.01. Uh, we're around 101.91. I've got a 10-minute delay, so I'm not exactly sure where we're at, but 102.01. Watch that level. If gold, if the U.S. dollar closes above that, it's a signal that we should see a further pullback, certainly inside of uh, gold. Now, we're taking a look at Pan American Silver. This is for Thomas, and Thomas is specifically looking for support levels. And right now, uh, what Pan American Silver is doing is testing a very key level. You want to watch the uh, bottom of its profile, which is at 18.13. If you get a close below 18.13, now this is a bullish structured profile out there, certainly two consecutive closes, so that's tomorrow's well, Thomas, then that's going to signal that we should see price pull back to 1624. That is its breakout level. It's really supported by the weekly time frame, which is uh, price is trading with inside its profile. And a further move lower would suggest to move back to 1705. So we're at 1624, 1705 is an area. On the monthly chart, we can see that oscillator and change line is held as resistance. So everything we're seeing here in Pan American Silver says watch 1813. 
You get below that, two consecutive sessions, 1624 is likely the next stop out there. And uh, thanks for uh, your new listener, and thanks so much for listening and for writing in. The last question from SNP, S&P inside the Tiger's Den is looking for Slumberjay, SLB. So SLB, when we take a look at Slumberjay out here, it's got a nice TD9 count, Roachman to Indicator bottom. Um, I don't see any kind of a uh, topping pattern out here, but price is pulling back. If it continues to pull back S&P, then I would think that where price would find support is either 49.51, that would be the ultimate support, or 50.37. 50.37 is the top of the profile. 49.51 was the center of its bearish structured profile. That should be strong support. Weekly time frame, you have a consolidation with inside its profiles. Same thing on the monthly. On the monthly, you're above the green oscillator and change line. So that's a uh, bullish signal out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at SLB. Now, with regard to Slumberjay, this looks like day number one to the downside of a uh, pullback. So we'd expect that this will pull back two to three days. Just the normal the normal routine out there. So I'd expect Slumberjay to pull back today, tomorrow, and maybe on Wednesday as well. Folks, stay tuned. You've got great programming lined up. Thanks so much for all the requests out there. We got through all of them. And uh, be safe out there. And I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magical Monday.